Today's estimated to be a four hour walk through to Lava Tower and as you can see our pace is affected by the altitude right from the start. Over the porter's shoulders here you'll see in the background uh, Shira Plateau which we came across two days ago. And here's an interesting one for you. Up here where our guys are standing at this track junction, there's a, a stretcher that's used to evacuate from the mountain. It um, looks like it's built out of a motorcycle top wheel with uh, the shock absorbers. And uh, I understand it can do some pretty quick trips down to the helipad with a couple of porters in control. <laughs> you okay? Watch this. This porter has somewhere around 12 to 14 kilos of weight in that bag on top of his head and he's not using his hands to balance it. As well, he's travelling about twice the speed that we are. Well, we're heading up to the far rock buttress. You can see the track and the porter's moving across it. We're aiming for that second or the far uh, lava tower. So it should be a couple of hours, uh, apparently, for us. Okay, so here we come, uh, last couple of metres now up into the lava tower camp. You can see on the right hand side there, it's the lava tower that the camp's named after. Doesn't look too impressive right at the moment, but it's not until you get over the brow of the hill here and look back at it that you see it's part of a, a much larger rock formation on the lower side of the mountain as well. Later this afternoon we're going to uh, continue on to an acclimatisation walk up to Ara Glacier and you can just see over to the right of Hapson's head there the trail that we're going to follow up onto the saddle uh, and then we'll get a view of our Ara Camp and Ara Glacier as well. So here we are just cresting the top of the hill and it's uh, a welcome relief to see that there's our three tents on the left hand side just behind Kendra and the mess in the cook tents up so uh, it looks like we're heading off for uh, tea and coffee right now. <laughs> 